Hello, welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for week two. I'm your host, Gary Smith, and alongside me is Coach Dunn. And you can see us live in HD, Technicolor, and uh, everything like that. Apologize, last week there was a cable that was disconnected and was not found till many hours afterwards. And uh, we apologize. And, and Coach and I both agree that um, my hair was not t still not TV ready, but I uh, have to deal with it one more week. But apologies to everybody out there. Uh, everything's fixed, and you'll be able to see us this week. And, Coach, it's good to see you on, on TV for the first yeah, time this good, year. Good to be back. I got, a, <laughs> I got a face for radio, so it wasn't all that bad last week. <laughs> yeah, we should do a poll, uh, poll. Should we do the show only on uh, audio or on video? But I think the video will, will win out. Um, but, Coach, we're in week two of the season. This past weekend was the first weekend of crossover play, and the schedule makers decreed that all the West teams would go east this week and. Uh, you guys had a long trip to Kutztown. We actually passed, well, we're behind your buses on the, the turnpike on Friday, but that that is a long trip. It, we only have a, t a crew of five. I can't imagine what it's like trying to organize a trip with almost 100 people. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I would obviously rather be at home every week, but, you know, you got to play on the road. And I thought our guys handled the travel well. I thought the trip went as, as good as it could have. Uh, you know, we left here, uh, you know, early morning on I guess that was Friday, mid-morning on Friday, and, and got out there and had a nice meal. So I thought the trip went and the travel went well. And uh, when you get to Kutztown, uh, it was one of those, I guess, one of those weird fall days. We've been having some, some temperate weather, but wake up on Saturday and it's about 85 degrees, but the humidity was 100 about 100 percent just a hot day but a beautiful day for football yeah it was it, it, it was warm and, and unfortunately we had some cold uh, some colder practice days and, and that led into it so uh but you got to play and, and you know i thought we did a good job for the most part we, we ended up getting some guys cramping up in, in the second half and and that hurt us a little bit but you know obviously both teams played in the same conditions well coming out in the first half um it was back and forth seven seven and then um, what seemed to be a staple of your team the last couple of years, just there's going to be a long drive at some point in the game. And uh, towards the end of the first half, your team got the ball deep in your own territory, but were able to work the field and get a field goal to go up 10 7 and a half. Yeah, I really felt like we controlled the first half. I thought like we played good in all three phases. Um, you know, the score obviously before that drive was 7 7. And it, it, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough ball game. Kutztown is extremely well coached, extremely talented upperclassman oriented team but I really felt through the first really three quarters we controlled the pace of the game um, you know so that was a big drive for us it was that point where you know I think we had a third and ten uh, you know is, do, do you try and run the clock out make them take a timeout and, and, and punt it and, and give your defense less time you know we called a timeout there and I see you know what they go get the first down and I think we threw a big ball to Jaquay Jackson down the sideline kind of got us rolling in our two minute drill um, and then Anthony Bico comes out and, and kicks a field goal. So we felt good at the half. It was 10-7, and, and we really felt like we controlled the pace of the game. And I feel remiss if I don't mention that what led to that long drive and getting the ball back was a big fourth and uh, goal stop for your defense because um, Kutztown was inside. I think they had the ball at the five or six yard line uh, and had a chance to go up 14-7 going in half. But your, your defense made a stop, uh, stripped the ball. It didn't matter because it was fourth down, but sure. I mean – Defense came up big in a couple key spots. Yeah, we had, like a, we had a couple, you know, good fourth down stops. Um, we just got to be more consistent. I think, you know, the, some of the errors, and give Kutztown credit, they made the plays and took advantage of, of some of the mistakes we made uh, defensively, and really offensively for that matter. It was, it was a game where, you know, we talk to our guys, we worry about ourselves, and, and we handle our business. And, and unfortunately, at some key moments, we had some, some missed assignments and some mistakes. And that's on coaching. You know, we've got to coach them better to, to get them ready for those situations, and, and we've got to be more detailed oriented. But there was a couple key stops on fourth down there that, that you know, it, it was just a good college football game all around. Yeah, you, you took the words right out of my mouth, and I was also going to use the, the analogy. It was almost like a, a heavyweight fight because you come out, both teams come out in the third quarter, uh, heat of the day, and um, no punches were pulled. I mean, that, that was a physical third quarter, both sides, and uh, – you know, you go into the fourth quarter leading, but it could still make a couple of plays. But that, like you said, that back and forth in that third quarter was just a yeah, tight fight. We came out after the after half, and, and we put a nice drive together. And we get down in the red zone. We're up, like you had said, we're up ten to seven. Uh, we get down inside the ten yard line, and, and unfortunately, our quarterback catches a cramp in his calf. And you know, the the heat got us at that moment. Um, our tailback, our starting tailback, uh, caught, caught cramps. So, you know, the most critical time we're inside the red zone, inside the 10 yard line, and, and we're without our starting tailback and without our starting quarterback. Uh, you know, next guy's got to step, make, make a play. We had an opportunity to score there. I thought if we went up two scores there, 
you know, that, that's kind of a different, a different deal. Um, you know, we end up settling for a field goal. So, okay, we're still up 13 to seven. We got, you know, we're going into the fourth quarter. Uh, we just didn't execute in the fourth quarter. We had a lot of, of, of errors, um, you know, and, and we got to do a better job coaching them, you know, and, and that was kind of, you know, defensively, we had a couple missed assignments. Offensively, we come out and, and we get a delay a game, which is, 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 that's on me. Um, you know, and then we, we fumble a snap inside the 10. We had a big kickoff return that got us out to the 50-yard the line, and we had a holding call on it. So now instead of starting at the 50-yard line, we're at the 10-yard line. It just seemed like anything that could have went wrong in that fourth quarter did. Well, uh, just back up a little bit on that drive uh, where you kicked the field goal. I wanted to make a point. Uh, how nice is it to have a kicker like Anthony Beatco in there because he made two clutch field goals, and as we saw this weekend in the NFL, field goals anymore are not uh, a guaranteed thing, but he came out in two, you know, end of the first half, kicked a, a clock or a field goal as the time was expiring, and then in that situation, you know, to go up 13-7. Yeah, a Anthony, you know, we've got – We've got a ton of confidence in Anthony, and there was a couple situations in that game where I was debating whether kicking a field goal or going for it on fourth down. You know, it was 47 yards. There was a little bit of wind in the one situation. We had a fourth and three. You know, I said let's go for it, and it was about the 30 yard line. So it would have been a 47 yard field goal from the right hash. Unfortunately, we have an illegal procedure. Now that backs us up. Now you're at a 52 yard field goal. So we still went for it, and we're you know we converted some big fourth downs. That one we weren't able to. Uh, we've got to be more disciplined in our approach to, to a fourth and three is a lot easier than fourth and eight, that's for sure. Well, unfortunately, the fourth quarter, Quidstown uh, came ahead, uh, got up 23-13, or 20, I think it was 23-13, but your team in the last two minutes did a great job of at least coming back, fighting, and scoring right before the uh, – Right before the buzzer, it didn't change the final score, but it showed a lot of fight in that last. Yeah, uh, you know, we were we were up six. They scored to go up one. We had a couple opportunities and, and didn't take advantage of it. Uh, they ended up scoring again, so now we're down eight. Which okay, you know, we, we still got an opportunity. Let's go put a drive together. Let's go score, and, and we're going to go for two. Uh, we 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 had some open things and, and just didn't connect. Uh, but I was, you know, our kids are going to battle. You know, we. We said, okay, we're down 10 right now. Let's, let's go put a score together and, and, and let's get an onside kick. Unfortunately, uh, we ran out of time. And uh, uh, that end of the game, 23-19 was the final score. Uh, some good performances on the field despite the loss. Noah Mitchell, uh, 22 for 38, 235 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. On the ground, uh, your team combined for another 104 yards. And uh, Jaquay Jackson, seven for 110. And, and once again, you look at the receivers. You, you guys do a great job of spreading out the offense. Yeah, I, I think we had some kids step up this week, and, and we had talked about that last week. Malik Langley had been bad on a hamstring injury uh, all through camp. And so we didn't play in the first week, um, but, he, but he really flashed to us. Eric Willis is another guy that, that, that continues to flash. Cam Terrence, Mr. Steady, I think Cam's been here for eight years and, mm -hmm. and, and does everything right. Um, and, and we've got a couple other guys we think that, that are going to step up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, we, we're, we're battling some injuries at, at tailback right now, so hopefully you know, we're a little bit healthier there this week than we were last week. But you know, we are spreading the ball around, and, and I'm, I'm pleased with the, the direction the running game's going. Uh, we've got to continue to work on that. Um, you know, I thought we had some nice runs, and unfortunately on Saturday we got behind the change with some penalties and, and, and a, you know, a fumbled snap that, that kind of took the run game out of our hands in the fourth quarter, and, and we've got to be consistent in those things. And on the other side of the ball, Coach, if I have quick math, is any indication uh, Noah Dillo, Matt Tobey, and Gabe Miller combined for 31 tackles and three behind the line? And uh, for a good part of that game, uh, once again, your defensive front seven was, was uh, in the backfield and also harassing the uh, quarterback for, for Quitstown all day. He was on the run. A lot. Yeah, I, I think we did a, a great job at times. Uh, we've got to be more consistent to our approach on defense. We've got to be making sure that we're following our roles and we're, we're reading our keys and we're hitting our gaps. And I think, you know, when we do that, that performance is going to be even better. Uh, there were, at, at times we played really well defensively. At other times we had some key breakdowns that, that cost us in the, in the same offensively. Those are the things that, that we've got to work on and practice this week. Uh, we're going to be super demanding as a coaching staff and super detailed. And, and I think that, that we'll We'll get better and we'll learn from this experience. Well, let's take a look at the experience this past week and hear the highlights from uh, week two's action on the road at Kutztown. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Mitchell going to let it fly. Finds Jackson on the far side. He's going to cut across midfield. Oh, he gets the first down and then some. Mitchell drops back. 
lets it fly across the field and it's picked off. Off oh, by Kutztown, but he's gonna be brought down on by Willis. Quarterback sneak, and the ball comes out. The ball comes out. Old so 35-yard attempt, beat coast kick up, and it's good. The Vulcans take their first lead of the day. Kick is up, and good. Quarterback keeper, er, and the ball comes out. Hold oh, and it's going to be, he stopped, recovered by, heard by I Blaine, but guess what? Uh, he stopped well behind in the line in his scrimmage. Blaine takes the snap, hand off to Davis McNeil, and he's going to get in an open lane and walk right in for the touchdown. Six twenty to go in regulation, and the Vulcans are going to bring the pressure. There goes the ball down the field, and it's caught right by number eighty-five. Looks for a man and lets it fly, and it's going to be a touchdown, Vulcans. Cam Tarrant on the catch. than ever before. Haunted Hills Estate Screen Park returns September 9th. Get your tickets now at hauntedhillsestate.com. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. Once again, I'm Gary Smith, joined by head coach uh, Gary Dunn. And uh, coach, um, you know, the one thing consistent in life is time moves on and the calendar turns and um, can't dwell on win, lose, or draw. I can't dwell on the week previously because you have another opponent this week and it's another crossover matchup this time. Uh, to a, a pretty good team down in Shepherd, West Virginia, uh, the Shepherd Rams. Yeah, uh, super, super talented. Think they're rock, ranked in the top ten right now. Went to the the Final Four of the national playoffs. Played extremely well at home. Um, well coached, explosive offense, uh, defense that flies around and creates a lot of turnover. So uh, <laughs> it had been fun so far watching those guys. I think they. They've given up 14 points on the year and, and, and are averaging close to 50, uh, scoring 50. So it's going to be a tough test. I'm not really concerned with Shepard. I'm concerned with us. We've got to fix our mistakes and correct our mistakes. And, and I know our guys will get out of battle. Yeah, it's, it's one of the, the, the things about college football. You know, next, next team up, but uh, always see. I think every, every coach in the country would like to say that the, the underdog rolls where they want to be. You don't want to have the target on your back necessarily, but you can use that, like, that Rocky type mentality and. Um, you know, like I said, your team has always responded to the challenges after a loss. And like I said, this is going to be a fun college football atmosphere down at Shepherd. They, they pack that stadium down there. Uh, now, I know you've watched a little bit of film, probably a lot more than a little bit of film yeah. uh, in the last couple of days. But let's just break down both sides of the ball first for Shepherd on offense. We know they have uh, the reigning uh, Harlan Hill Trophy winner, Tyler Badgett, at quarterback. But what else do they do? Because it's not obviously... You can have the greatest player, but if you don't have 10 other guys stepping up, you're, yeah, you're nobody. They, they've got some really explosive receivers, um, and, and they've got a, a super good tailback that's that's running it really, really well right now. And I think it all really starts with their run game. Uh, they're a big RPO scheme. They're going to have a run-pass option with, with the tailback and the quarterback, and, and 
probably do it better than anybody we've seen. You know, sometimes they'll read a defender or, you know, what in coaching we call putting a defender in conflict. Is he going to play the run? Is he going to play the pass? And, and they'll, they'll choose off of what he does. Uh, but they'll also RPO it where if he likes a matchup on a guy, he's, gonna, he's just going to throw it. Uh, so super balanced offense. I think the kid ran for over 250 yards uh, last week and, and some really explosive receivers and, a, and obviously a senior veteran quarterback leading the charge and they're strong up front. Uh, there's really no weakness on our offense. They're putting a lot of points on their board. Their scheme's good. Uh, we've got to be detail oriented and be in our right gaps and, and, and reading our keys, but we also got to tackle well. I think that's one thing that, you know, one takeaway from Saturday, uh, we had some opportunities to make tackles and we missed tackles. Against this team, if you miss tackles, they're going, it's going to be a big play. And on the other side of the ball, Coach, uh, what do they bring defensively? What kind of fronts and uh, what, what can we look at for uh – for the Vulcans when they're on offense? Yeah, it really starts up front for them. I think their front four is as good as anybody we've played. Uh, you know, they're a, they're a base four down front. They'll, they'll play, you know, basically a four, two, five, four, four down front, uh, two backers, and re really a kind of hybrid backer safety type guy. A, starting a, a two high shell, uh, two high safeties, and, and, and mix their coverages up. We'll blitz a little bit, probably not as much as Kutstein did uh, last week. They'll bring pressure, but. They really don't have to blitz. I think the, the key for them in, the, in their pass defense is their two defensive ends are, are really good football players. They're both quick. You know, usually you can prepare when you've got one defensive end that, that, that's, a, that's the best pass rusher. Uh, unfortunately, this week they've got number nine on one side, number 11 on, on the other side, and they're both really, really good pass rushers. So uh, we've got to match up with those guys and, and do a good job of pass protection, and, and we've got to control the football. And that game will be noon on Saturday, Shepherdtown, West Virginia. And Coach, I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier about you know they usually pack the stadium, but I neglected to mention you know Kutztown, you the your team is traveling well with the I fans. You, I, I looked over at one point about 15 minutes before the game. I'm like, is is this Adam State Adamson Stadium East because yeah. it was all red and black over there? I tell you, it was it was impressive. You know, obviously our families travel extremely well, um, and rightfully so. But we had a lot of alumni there. It was kind of a a nice day for me. We had uh, I had two well, two of my good friends that, that live out east, one in Philadelphia, one in New York, uh, that made it over to the game. And then I, I've had a bunch of teammates that were there that I haven't seen since we played together. Tracy Latham was a corner um, from the Harrisburg area. Was there? Uh, Quinn Durrett was a was a young buck when I was playing. Um, you know, so it was good to see those guys. Scott Aquilino, uh, a good friend of mine from New York, and John DeFrugio from Philadelphia. You know, we go on the road, you know, Cal U football special. And, and I know it's been 30 years. I had a great talk with some of those guys about, you know, now I got to get you. I, I appreciate you coming to see us while we're out east. Now I got to get you back to campus <laughs> for golf outings and, and, and things that we do and homecoming. And, uh, you know, I think they're excited to get back. Oh, my goodness, if it's been that long, it's, uh, it's going to be like a stepping into Oz because the, the Adams Stadium has changed a lot since uh, the time you played. Well, uh, that and campus. You yeah. know, when I first got hired seven years ago, I brought a bunch of alumni back to campus and they couldn't believe the difference in campus. They asked where Longnecker Hall was and, and where was the parking lot next to Hamer <laughs> with the new convocation center. And obviously the student center is totally different. So, you know, it'll be good to get those guys back for, for homecoming. And uh, before we get homecoming, we're on the road this, this Saturday. So make sure to come on out. Uh, like I said, when we were when I was traveling, we were traveling out. I mean, I saw uh, other than your team, I saw a lot of fan, fans with the uh, the Vulcan logos. When we got to Kutz on our hotel, people were chanting "Go Vulcans" because they saw the Vulcan logo. So uh, that's just that's just nice to see. So make sure to come on out. It's not a, a bad trip. Me and Coach were saying it's under three hours. So get up early, get some breakfast on I sixty eight, and uh, come on out. But quickly before I put a bow on uh, the week, I'm going to just go through a couple of the scores from this past weekend's action in the PSAC. Uh, Gannon at Millersville. Uh, Gannon walked away with a 16-10 win. Slippy Rock traveling to Westchester wins 35-14. Shepard, this week's opponent, beat Edinburgh 41-7. Uh, Shippensburg held serve against Seton Hill 36-17. Bloomsburg over Clarion 42-3, and then Mercyhurst over Lockhaven. And then Coach, once again, um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, it's the second weekend of crossover play for the PSAC and some of the highlighted games for this week would be, um, and then this one is not all in the East. There's some back and forth. So, Quidstown's traveling to Mercyhurst. East, Stroud, East Stroudsburg's traveling to Seton Hill. Uh, Slippery Rock will be traveling to Millersville. IEP at Ship, and then Clarion at Lockhaven. So there's a, a full slate of games right there, and um, you know conference play. Even if it's crossover play, is special. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I say it every year. I love the PSAC because it's all regional rivalry games. It's not, you know, West Virginia playing Kansas or Pitt playing, 
you know, somebody from, from the ACC. It's, it's all regional rivalries. A lot of these kids went to high school together. A lot of them played against each, each other in high school. So it's, it's nice, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a good week of PSAC football. So make sure to come on out to Shepherdtown, West Virginia, this Saturday. Uh, the media plan is we will be there uh, this past weekend. If you watch, try to watch our stream, uh, we got throttled by our Verizon jetpack. So hopefully all the phone calls, emails, tweets, letters, cards, and everything to uh, Verizon will get that resolved. They won't throttle us back. And you can watch the game on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. And also listen to 91.9 FM uh, Power 92. But once again, the, the surefire, the best way, to see in the game live is to drive to Shepherdtown, West Virginia. Like I said, me and Coach said, I think we said 241. I think if you really hustle, 235, and that's getting a breakfast bagel somewhere in Lavelle, Maryland. Absolutely. So, Coach, thanks for being here this week. Appreciate it. Good luck this week. Safe travels, and we see everybody next week on The Gary Dunn Show.